In this video, we're going to be looking at the aims of uh, Henry the Seventh. Oh, I'm spelling that wrong already. The aims of Henry the Seventh as a leader. So, there are uh, a key, uh, a few key aims that we can look at that he, um, that we can tell by the policy decisions he made. So, like um, we look at his policy decisions. So, so his policy decisions. And from that, we did we deduce uh, what really he uh, what he prioritized as a king. So his first uh, key aim was obviously to uh, remain king for as long as possible. So they want he wants to remain king for a long time. And this is something that. Um, was uh, particularly important because the time he uh, took the throne in 1485 we still had the Wars of the Roses so we had monarchs that weren't staying in power for very long okay so his second uh, main policy was to um, to try and break free of this um, this dynastic loop where we have Lancastrians versus Yorkist claims in um, England and we have um, kings uh, not s establishing a dynasty so that's what he wanted to do he wanted to establish establish his own dynasty or dynasty so his own dynasty and this was very important. He wanted to uh, really, um, really simplify the line of succession and end the Wars of the Roses. And this will be done by creating his own dynasty. And he had a couple of uh, other claims. Now, these were the aims that really un uh, underpinned every decision he made. So from uh, a strong and secure dynasty, we want to see what he can, what how he does this, and how he creates this strong and uh, this strong and stable dynasty. And he does this by creating uh, an effective government, an effective government, and he also um, wants to maintain law and order. So this is unlike anything during the Wars of the Roses. He wants to ensure that we have law and order within the countryside and just within the cities as well. And he wanted to, uh, the another main uh, key uh, aim that we can see through his uh, policy decisions, he wanted to control the nobility. Control uh, the nobility. Because what he believed was if the nobility got uh, too powerful, if there was too powerful a nobility, they could um, uh, challenge him to the throne. They could challenge him as a uh, potential um, claim to the throne. So challenge to the throne. And this is true considering that a lot of the nobility did have some, uh, albeit relatively weak, I'm going to put weak, claims to the throne. Uh, to the throne. However, so did Henry the Seventh. He also had, as we saw in the last video, he also had a weak claim to the throne. So the idea of the nobility, a a, a high-ranking member of the nobility, challenging him to the throne, challenging the throne, uh, is not out of the ordinary. And this is also something that we've seen a lot of during the Wars of the Roses. Now his aims, uh, we're gonna explore these in a lot more detail by looking at government and foreign policy and his social policies. But for the next video, we're going to look at how he consolidates his power at uh, the start of his reign.